This is a JJRC H26. Greetings, this is Leo. Having worked with a large multi-rotor company in the last two years, I've been asked if I would continue to review a series of smaller quadcopters and hexacopters. So here I have here a Gearbest pick, the H26. First impression, this quadcopter looks somewhat familiar. So I went to the hangar to retrieve a few models. Check this out. If I never knew the H26 had a carbon version, well, look closely. It's actually a Wakira Scout X4 next to it. White, green, and the carbon. Of course, nothing compared to a 6 cell Scout X4 quadcopter. The H26 is very light, weighing just about 380 grams. The weight advantage is the H26 is not going to break that easily when you crash it because it's light. So this is a pretty good training quadcopter. The size is just right, it's not too small or too big and it's safe for beginners. I spent a week flying it and I actually like it. I never had any issues with brush motors. I'm uh, actually a big fan of ultralight quadcopters. For what it is, it's quiet when you fly it. Everything you see here is what you get. A spare set of propellers, a basic radio with headless mode and a claim to return to home a camera with a app to use Wi-Fi based uh, landing skid propeller guts with LEDs uh, charging cable USB a phone holder which attaches to your radio transmitter user manual a Wi-Fi user manual and a screwdriver and lots of spare screws like everyone else, uh, I'm curious about the headless mode and the return home without GPS. To enable headless mode, you just press the top right button, a quick press with a beep, it's headless mode, and if you hold it down, it becomes return right, to home. Let's check this out. The headless mode. Oh, not bad. You pull back, come back, and go for it. Get less more. Cancel hit less more. So now we're gonna do a long beep for a return home. Let's try that now. Wow. Uh, not that good. The uh, return home is just a um, oh, it's a crazy return home. <laughs> Don't try return home. Not a good idea. One of the most important steps in setting up a quadcopter is installing propellers. If you don't install it correctly, it's either going to tip over or just don't fly. So here I have a diagram. Uh, you can see the labels. GGRC has made it simple. A should match an A propeller and a B should match a B propeller. The instruction manual isn't that great, so I've included a short clip on how to install propellers. Basically, the gear slips right underneath, and there's a pinhole where you would uh, actually screw the propellers right into it. Out of box, I could have actually liked to see some changes to this quadcopter. The thought process of meeting safety toy standards, a screw has been added to the LiPo battery compartment. It's not the most convenient thing to have, but without the screw, the lid simply flies off. I like the full set of LED prop guards for the night flying. It looks great. Uh, it does protect the, the propellers too. Um, there's no difference between the front and the back lights, they are identical, but they do light up pretty well. 
I have not figured out how to secure the landing skates yet, but I guess with a little bit of tape that will also do the trick. The skates do fall off if you don't tighten them. To summarize my thoughts about this H26, it is definitely a keeper, a quad copter that I can pull out to give a friend a lesson or two. For what it is, I have no other complaints other than the inconvenience of a screwed on battery compartment in a loose landing skid. I don't have a phone that could support the camera with the app, so I've added a Mopius for this flight to show you how it flies. So let's take a look. <laughs> 